Well, it's nice to be back out there on the practice field. Feels like football again. Um, we were we were excited and players were excited, a lot of spirit and energy, and I couldn't wait. So I'm uh, I'm sorry you guys all can't be here in person. We got Ken here in person, but uh, um, I'll just let you guys fire away. Uh, Jeff, uh, so, well, how did the first day of practice go? What did you work on? It's it's really hard to do a whole lot of. Uh, a whole lot of football stuff, 11-on-11 11 11 group work, because we're not in pads. The NCAA permit us only to wear helmets as the only – and we can wear those light spider pads that really aren't shoulder pads, but it just protects those guys in case they run into each other, which is nice to have. But a lot of fundamentals, um, a lot of new coaches. So new coaches still you know, just getting in the groove, getting to know these guys, learning the offense and defense. Um, and, uh, and and players getting getting accustomed to a new voice and, and somebody else coaching them. But I, I thought the spirit was great. Guys were flying around and, and trying to practice hard. They were enthusiastic and excited to be out there. And it's it's just really difficult to get a uh, to get an evaluation. We did some uh, eleven man stuff offensively and defensively. Uh, there's no interaction. Uh, other than a, a short five minute um, skelly period and everybody just staying off the ground, but it's good. It's good to have some competition and, and, and interaction and be able to, to have guys in different color jerseys going against you. But for the rest of practice, it was all uh, same color jerseys on each side, each side. So offensive guys scouting for offense and same on the defense. Jeff, given the personnel losses, are there any position groups on the team that you really need to see something from this spring? Uh, I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of positions where we, we'd like to find out more about some young guys that are going to have to provide depth. Um, the inside linebacker position, uh, we, we, we lost Eric Smith, who was a three-year starter, terrific player. And, and, uh, and so see who's going to step up there. Um, Nose guard Nolan Cockrell and 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 what a impact player he was for us at that position and uh, trying to sort out just kind of who those guys are going to be up front and we need to find out something there. Um, Brandon Walters losing him he's just such a a steady guy and and he just did it all for us. Um, you know Chuck Martin who's the coach at Miami of Ohio he asked me about one guy before the game last year and that was. That was uh, Brandon Walters. He's just so impressed with all the different different things that he did. We'll miss Zach Harding, and I wish we never had to punt, but inevitably we're probably going to have to at some point. And he was such a weapon for us. Uh, so a lot we need to find out there. Uh, there's there's other positions like that. Losing Christian Anderson, um, you know his leadership and that he's such a veteran guy. But it's great to have guys like Tyre Tyler back and Cade Ballard and guys that have played. And, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. The old line lost some guys there, uh, and uh, we'll miss those guys for sure. But there's enough in that group that have played that uh, it's not void. Um, I'm just going to have to have some guys develop to, to provide the depth. Mm -hmm. And have you switched anyone to new positions as a tryout or a look-see? We moved Maurice Ballon, who was a quarterback, to slot. Um, we moved uh, Markel Johnson, who didn't play at all last year. He's a scout team guy from slot to be back just to look at him. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think uh, if there's any major guys that, that you guys would, would recognize. Um, you know, not, not, uh, not any major, major impactful moves um, defensively. And there's some guys that were playing end last year, might play nose. Uh, some guys that played outside linebacker might up, end up playing end. We'll find that out as the as the uh, as the spring season goes along. But not not a whole lot of change. I think just bringing those guys along that have played the positions that they're at and and try to try to get them to to develop and and uh, again, like I said, be be guys that can provide depth guys that can step in and play and be special teams players. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll, there probably can be some some position changes as we go through it because 
guys will get hurt and we'll have a need or we'll see that it's really not working out in a certain position for a guy and we want to move him to a, to another position. So that may happen. Sure. And then one more personnel question. Uh, any injury updates and are you holding out any players or limiting reps on some guys this spring? We're going to limit reps, particularly in the um, interaction periods with a lot of guys. So there's just some players that have played enough football that they don't need to go in there and pound in uh, in 11 on 11 periods against the other side of the ball to have themselves ready to play. And they need to get some reps. Well, everybody's going to get reps. Everybody's going to practice. It's healthy enough to do that. But we're going to limit some of those guys that have played, and that will open up opportunities for guys who haven't played as much to, to get evaluated. Um, but in, in terms of injury reports, uh, there, there's, there's guys that are on and off the, the injured list each day, that things happen in the weight room or things happen on the practice field or ha things happen in a workout. And, and then there's other guys that are coming along and, and recovering from off-season procedures that, that uh, have kind of set them back a little bit. And they're either out there on a limited basis or we got to hold them for a little while. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Ken. Good afternoon, Coach. Uh, Charles Grievous here with GoBlackNights.com. Good to see you. You too, Charles. Thank you. Um, I, I know that it's, it's early in the process, um, but you, you've gone through the winter strength and conditioning program along with, you know, what other, uh, other winter progressions, if you will. Uh, coming into this spring session, is there a level of excitement and enthusiasm about what you've seen over the winter via those programs and along with the personnel that's returning uh, this year? Our guys get excited to go in the weight room. I think we got a great culture in there. Coach Hughes and that staff does a tremendous job. They they do a tremendous job leading that that uh, that room. And when the guys go in there, they're fired up. And I think that that contributes to the gains that they make. And and we've got a strong football team. And they're not, they're not you know there's other football teams are going to walk guys in there, maybe outlift our guys, but just generally overall I think we got a good strong football team and it's because they work really hard in there and that that gives them confidence when they take the field in the spring and it'll give them confidence as they take the field in the fall and um, so that that's uh it's been fun to watch those guys and when we had those max days and everybody's fired up it, it uh you know it's a lot of fun so the um the enthusiasm and the the energy, I, I think, coming out of that that off season weight program, it just carries into spring ball. Our guys were really excited to get out there on the field, and I, there's there's guys that are excited to have a chance to compete. They played on the scout team last year, or maybe they were a special teams guy and didn't see much action on offense or defense, and they know this is a chance for them to to really kind of position themselves for the fall. And, uh, and there are some veteran guys, and I think we got some good leadership. I'm excited about the guys that we have in, in those positions. But when, when, when you graduate good players as we did, and guys that have played a lot, there's going to be a void that needs to be filled, both on the field and, and off the field in terms of leadership. Um, and then the production that they, they have for us on Saturday afternoon. So uh, I'm confident we'll have guys that will step up, but there's just going to have to be some guys that, that come along and improve to be able to play at the level that some of those, those graduating seniors did. And, and, and kind of segue into what you just stated. Uh, uh, are there any uh, the young players that you can probably name at this stage that stepped up maybe during the winter uh, progressions and, and what, what key positions are you currently are currently up for grabs, especially, you know, losing the likes of, you know, Eric Smith and Nolan Cochran, just to name a couple. So those, those are two positions that, and those are two really good players, and uh, and hopefully we've got guys on our team that can step up and play at that level. It's going to be a challenge for them, or, or any of our guys, to do that because it's, those are two really good football players. Uh, but there's been a lot of guys that have made some significant gains in terms of their strength and conditioning. How that will translate into what they do on the field is another story. And so I think probably – after next Saturday, we'll have a chance to to get out there in pads and and uh, get a little bit more of the the schemes installed, 
and and have a practice where we can have some interaction next Saturday, we'll we'll have a better idea of who's really come along. But there's been a significant change in a lot of our our young guys, especially our freshmen and and some of those sophomores and what they've done in the off season. But that's 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 been uh, that's been that's 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 kind of a common theme. Those guys come in here and they go through beast barracks and. They go through their 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 fall season as uh, as freshmen, and it's hard. It's hard to develop. It's hard to to gain all that weight back that sometimes they they have a tendency to lose when they're going through summer training. Um, but once they gain it back as freshmen, then they keep it. It stays on, and and uh, it's kind of fun to see those bodies transform. There's a there's a local guy here, Tyler Rafferty, um, yeah. and he's from Newburgh Free Academy. I've been really impressed with how he's developed just his body and he's, he's completely changed people that know him in high school. Uh, if they hadn't seen him since high school, they wouldn't recognize him. So, you know, that's one guy that's just a local guy that I'm really proud of and excited that he's on our team. I'm looking forward to watching him compete this spring. Great. And my, my follow-up and final question, you know, honestly, coach, I think the proverbial question from fans, uh, which has been out there since the, the end of the 2021 season, uh, who will emerge as a starting quarterback? Obviously, I'm not looking for you to answer that right now, but can you talk about the process in, in which you will take to determine who will start and, and do you see maybe utilizing the alternating quarterback scenario, if you will? We'll, we'll just kind of have to see if, if that's something that will, will benefit us. I, I don't know about the alternating quarterbacks. I think it's a lot easier to alternate quarterbacks in our system than maybe uh, and maybe somebody else's a more whatever traditional football is these days. Um, Tyre Tyler is going to be hard to beat out just because he's played so much. But there are some things that that some of those other guys do that uh, that make them really valuable and 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 may allow them to be the starter and and maybe Tyre is that guy that's the the second guy in the rotation and maybe 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 two of them will beat him out. I don't know. It's experience is hard to be it's the most difficult thing to compete with if you if you're a guy that hasn't played a lot but I have always been and continue to be impressed with Cade Ballard he's um he's such a great leader and uh really smart tough kid throws the ball so well um and I'm, I'm excited to see him I, I know he's going to compete really really hard for the job um Jamel Jones, who has some experience playing, has played for us and made some plays. Uh, he's one of the strongest players we've got, uh, certainly pound for pound. He's a very physical guy, and uh, he's been around here long enough that he knows the offense really well. Bryson Daly, who's a freshman, played on the scout team. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe as excited about watching him this spring as I am anybody. He's uh, – he looks like a linebacker, big, thick guy, throws a good football, and, uh, and he's a really good leader. He, he had a really good prep year for us two years ago. Um, and, uh, and watching him, Alon Mitchell's another guy that's a freshman, very talented. So we'll, we'll, we'll watch all these guys and, and just kind of see how, how it plays out over the spring. Ty is one of those guys that we're, we're probably going to watch the reps. He's played enough. I don't know that he's going to do anything in the spring that's going to give us a better evaluation than, than what he's done against other people on Saturday afternoons. So it'll give those other guys a chance to, to really compete. Thanks coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Coach uh, Ken Kratzer, SAL radio. Good to see you. Um, just when you evaluated last season, you had ups, you had a few downs, a few disappointments. Were the things that you decided that the, you had to do to improve the program to get to another level? Well, I, I think we evaluate each one of those games separately. And I, I don't know that there was an, an overarching theme with the four games that we lost. That There were just things in each one of those that, that uh, we didn't do as well as we could have and give the other teams credit. They made plays and beat us. They made more plays than we did, and that's how you win a football game. Um, you know, we, we, we've had in, – in some of those games, we turned the ball over, and it was costly. Um, in some of those games, we, we gave up some big plays, and uh, whether it was in a kicking game or on defense, that cost us. And so we got to find ways to, to 
not make the mistakes that probably have more control over. Um, certainly hanging on to the ball and, and securing the football, doing better with, with the ball exchanges. Um, being in position fundamentally where we need to be to, to at least be in position to make a play. And sometimes, uh, you know, the kicking plays or the defensive plays where, where they had, we had big plays against us, guys not playing uh, very well fundamentally, either by assignment or, or the things that, that go along with that position. So uh, that's, that's not an excuse. Those are the reasons that, that it didn't happen and, uh, and give the teams that, that we played credit. They, they made the plays. They they uh, they put themselves in position to make the plays. So we got to figure out how to how to do that. Big plays for or against are, are a big factor in winning football games, and and uh, certainly turnovers are a big factor in uh, in winning football games. And so those those were some maybe some uh, common themes with the games that we lost. A couple of coaching, assistant coach changes. Uh, certainly Mike Vitti uh, moving to, to offensive line. Maybe uh, take us through a couple of the changes in your coaching staff. So we've got, we've got a lot of new coaches. Uh, so defensively, we, we hired Scott Sloan, who was the defensive coordinator at Georgia Southern, to come in and coach the safeties and, and uh, be the co-defensive coordinator. He really took Sheil Wood's spot. Sheil um, left to be the defensive coordinator at Troy, and, and uh, it's a great Great opportunity for him. We wish him well. Uh, and then Sean Cronin, who was the defensive line coach of Colorado State last year, came in to coach our, our defensive line. Um, and glad to welcome him. He's, he's a veteran coach. He does a really good job. Um, and then offensively, moving Coach Vitti, um, we, uh, we lost Sanga to Atelli. He, he took the O-line job at Fresno. And... Um, which is great for him and his family. He's from California. He's closer to his folks, and we were we were sad to lose him, but happy for him and his family. But um, we really felt like, and we talked about this in the past, how good of a football coach Mike Vitti is, and what a great job he does developing people and building relationships, and the respect that our players across the board, not just on offense where he'd been coaching the running backs, but across the board have for him. And I think it was just a a great move for us and for him to be able to go to the offensive line and work with Coach Davis. Um, we hired Blake Powers, who's been working in an off the field role for us to take Mike's place and coach the B-backs. Uh, I, he knows our culture. He's been around here. He has, has had a big impact on us signing a lot of the players and guys on this roster. He had a big hand in getting them here. So uh, I think that was a really good move. And then uh, at the wide receiver position, we hired Aaron Smith, who coached the wide receivers last year at UConn. Really impressed with him. Uh, his dad was actually the garrison commander here at West Point oh. when he was growing up. And uh, he went to high school at O'Neill. And so he's kind of coming back home. And he's just, I've just really enjoyed watching him coach. He's doing a, a really good job. And then Jason Nichols joined us from East Carolina, coached the slot backs. So we've had, um, we've had some moves, but, uh, you know, we got a great defensive coordinator, Nate Woody, who will get all those guys on the same page. We got a great, def a great offensive coordinator, Brent Davis, uh, who knows this, this offense as well as anybody, and he'll get those guys up to speed. And they're all good coaches, and they're all working really hard. They're, they're, I, I've already had a chance to see them all recruit and very impressed with the job they do there. So I'm encouraged and excited about this season coming up with those guys. Sure, sure. Uh, just ask about Andre Carter, certainly. Had a great season last year uh, with sack production, and uh, uh, this year as a senior, what would you like to see him do to improve his game? Oh, I I think there's probably things that that uh, Coach Woody and and Coach Luce and and Andre himself recognize as as uh, as ways to get better and ways to improve. And rather than talking about those publicly, we've talked about them with him. But he's a really talented player, and the good news is. He's still not as good as he can be. There's gonna, there are little things for him that, that he can do to improve and, and get better. And the great thing about Andre is he is so humble. Every day, every day he stops by Coach Woody's office after practice and wants to ask about what he can improve or something he did or can I look at this one play with you? And he just uh, he's a guy that takes a lot of pride in being the best he can be and, and – uh, Got to admire that for a guy that's an All-American.
Sure, Connor Bishop, uh, your center, uh, had to overcome some injury issues last year. Uh, how do you see his game performing, uh, improving, but also just getting healthy? He needs to get healthy and and be his very best. He is going to be the leader of of that that offense and that offensive line. Um, he really is already kind of. You just see that that ability to to take charge and and almost be like a captain. We haven't voted on captains yet, but he just he just operates that way. Guys have so much respect for him. He doesn't does a great job as a player. He's incredible in in the classrooms uh in his in his coursework and it carries over up here he's a really smart football player and and uh can can grasp the concepts like a like a veteran player should and and uh guys like bryce holland and brett toth and where they really became very well, well versed in the offense that's where he's at and uh and he was like that last year he just uh, the injury really slowed him down and I hated he had to had to work through that but if we can keep him healthy I think he's going to make a, a huge impact on our on our football team and his final question the impact you mentioned Brad Toth uh, uh, the impact uh, several uh, players have had in the NFL uh, Cole Christensen Elijah Riley and then Ellie Hammer of Villanueva just announcing his retirement after a, a tremendous career uh, in the NFL we're really, really proud of all those guys having that opportunity to play at the next level. Ali actually came and talked to our team um, last week, and it was a thrill for our guys. And And he just talked about what this place means to him and playing Army football and serving in the Army and and just so passionate about West Point and, and his the opportunity he had to serve. So he told our guys, he goes, I'd go back and do it again if they'd let me. I'd, I'd go right back and serve. And it, it's – He's just passionate about um, his connection with with Army and Army football. So proud of those guys, uh, John Radigan, like like you said, and Cole and Elijah and Brett Toth. Looking forward to those guys next year, and hopefully they'll make a team. And I think we got some seniors that might might have a chance this year. So uh, we just had our pro timing day a couple of days ago, and uh, hopefully those guys will have an opportunity as well. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Charles. Uh, yes, Coach. Uh, just speaking of Coach Woody, at the beginning of the uh, 2021 season, uh, you know, Coach Woody uh, had a lot of praise when it came to linebacker Spencer Jones. But uh, last year, injury prone, um, and he was down for most of the year. Can you talk about his his current status, if you may? He's still injured, and we're holding him right now. Uh, I don't know that he's going to be able to participate in spring drills. We're hopeful that he will. Uh, just uncertain about that right now. Okay, thanks, Coach. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Charles. And, and Ken, last question. Yes, Jeff. Um, we had Markel and uh, Jacoby in here earlier. Can you just offer a few words about uh, each of them? Um, in particular, Jacoby told us uh, that he's dropped about 15 pounds and would like to go a bit more to test his explosiveness. Um, my question is, why mess with a good thing? Oh, I, th I think it's it's – he's got to feel good. He's got to feel comfortable in the body that he's in. And if, if he feels like cutting some pounds might help him, uh, may help him when he breaks out of there and gets to the second level, have the opportunity to, to take it the distance or, or be able to gain more yards running away from people. It's fine. I mean, if, if he's, if he's 250 pounds or 270 pounds, he's going to be a load and hard to tackle. You know, that, uh, we'll see how it goes. And, and we're, not, uh, we're not directing him to do that. We haven't said we think you should do this. It's something he felt like would help his game and help him improve. And, uh, and so, like I said, he's been 250 and he's been 270, and we'll see where he feels the best. But he's tough to tackle, I know that. So hopefully that will continue. And then, uh, and then with Markwell, I don't, I don't know if there's been – I don't know if there's been a more dynamic leader here than him. That guy is, he's just an incredible young leader. We're really fortunate to have him on our team. He's a good player. He just makes himself a good player. You know, Marquel Broughton isn't, isn't the most talented player at his position in the country. He may not be the most talented player on our team at his position. I don't know. He's talented enough. But he takes every ounce of ability he got, he has, and he maximizes that potential. And 
and he is a great leader and he brings the best out of everybody around him and he does that in a way that coaches can't there's just something different about leadership coming from within the ranks and when there's a player that that can do that and bring the best out of his teammates extremely extremely valuable and he does that as well as as anybody that has been here in my eight years Markwell did say that there are already players who are stepping up into uh, kind of leader positions, maybe not as captains officially, but how beneficial was his year as a junior captain and how important is his role as this, as the lone captain at the moment for your spring ball? Well, he is, and he's the guy everybody turns to. I, I do. I lean on him. Our players do. And he's a very courageous leader. He is not afraid to say what needs to be said. He doesn't worry about hurting feelings and, and tiptoeing around it. What needs to be said, he will say. But he's got a personality that the guys, they not only respect him, but, but they like him and, and they want to please him. And that makes him a, a, a really effective captain for sure. Can you tell us about Pro Day, how it went, who impressed it went really good. And, uh, you know, all those guys that, that participated, we had a, had a handful of guys that participated and did really well. And I was, I was just happy that they had the opportunity to do that and have that experience to be in front of NFL scouts and, and, uh, to be able to get their, their height and weight and their 40 time and their, their change of direction drills and get those all recorded where, where NFL teams will have access to those, those numbers. What, what an exciting time for those guys. I don't know if any of them will make it. I, I, hope, I, hope that, I hope that they do. I hope they all make it. But I think there's some guys on our team that played last year. They got a shot. And if they get in the camp, I think they'll impress the coaches. And, and uh, you know, the guys that we've got in, on NFL teams right now, none of those guys were five-star guys and had you know, 26 offers coming out of high school. They were guys who came here, worked really hard, developed – and and became NFL players. And I think we got some guys on our on our in our senior class on our team that that have done that as well. So hopefully they'll get the opportunity. When do you find out about that? I find out about about whether uh, what seniors may actually end up going to camp. Oh, I, that's that's all going to happen around the NFL draft. The draft will happen and then the in the hours and the day to follow uh, sometimes days to follow guys will start to to learn you know if they have opportunities to sign a free agent contract and those kinds of things so um, they're 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 going to continue to work out and train and and be ready in case anybody else wants to come in and work them out and which there may be some some follow-up workouts that that come out of this hopefully there will um and uh and then we'll see what happens and you think that there might be a couple that might get that opportunity i do mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, I saw you were mentioning coaches earlier. Um, Tucker Wall has moved from slot back coach to director of player personnel. Can you? Yeah, he's uh, he's the executive director of player personnel and recruiting. And uh, nobody knows this place better than Tucker. He's been here forever. And uh, he's this this past season, this fall, he surpassed Red Blake coaching the most games as a football coach in Army football history. So he has been here a long time and, and uh, has been a, a huge part of our success here. And uh, so he, he's, he's already doing a great job in that role and, and uh, helping us move forward. Was that a choice he made? Uh, you know, I know it's personal, but uh, I know he was having the medical difficulties. Is this something related? We just felt like this was going to be best for both the program and Tucker as we move forward. And, and that's why we made the change. And, and, uh, uh, he's he's incredibly valuable, beloved by everybody here, and and uh, so it just felt like it was the right move for uh, for both Tucker and for the program. Colonel Blake got the field named after him. Does Tucker get a portion of the field named after him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but but uh, I know he's made an impact on uh, a whole generation of Army football players, and just his mental toughness and the example that he's been for fighting through adversity to our, our team, our players, our coaches, everybody that touches this program, uh, he'll long be remembered.
And last thing, uh, just sum up the off season. Uh, you know, it's had its highs and its lows. Uh, what's it been like for the Army program during this time? Well, we, we've been excited about getting to this day. And uh, we worked really hard in the off season to prepare for the first day of spring ball. And, and that's what's great about this job. The seasons change. We, we had the football season. We got into recruiting. Then we had the off season and preparing for spring ball. Now we're back out there and it feels like the season again. And, uh, and just it's just an exciting time. So looking forward to these practices and seeing how guys improve and getting an idea of what we're going to look like in the fall. We, we, we won't entirely know that until we get to playing games, but, uh, but I'm anxious to see how the, the senior class we've got responds to the, to the, uh, to the, just the need for, for leadership and, uh, and, and helping everybody uh, work to the standards that uh, our army football and, and to meet the expectations we have. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Ken. You guys have a great night. You too. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Coach. Good to see you. Good to see you. I heard some of your point about Nick 